Hi everyone, prepare to pray, prepare to be blessed by the ministry of Apostle Joshua Selman as he teaches us on how to know if the hand of God is upon you. This video will bless you in no small way. Get ready to be blessed by this video production and God bless you. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130, The entrance of thy word is at life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. Behind the exploits of men and the mysterious hand of God upon great people in ministry, in business, there are people who God has suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. I tell you, it's not because their prayer life is the longest. It's not because their word study life is the most concise. There is something they have done with God. They have provoked a sworn blessing that in blessing i will bless you hallelujah but one of the ways you know that the hand of god has rested upon you there are many factors one is ease the next is increased access to territory it is impossible for the hand of god to be upon you and then it does not resonate with the territory yes sir hmm. are we together yes but the highest level of authority is when God can commit his program to your hand and say, I'm trusting you. I want to raise 50,000 worshipers and I'm putting you in charge of that agenda. It is true honor when God gives you. I want to raise 100 kingdom financiers and you are the one I have placed a grace. Can I tell you, if you get to that level of authority, even if a man believes God and ignores you in that generation, he will never step into that promise. It's true. These are mysteries that many people do not understand. There are men who have stopped being men. They have become systems. Access points to certain spiritual realities. Even when you meet God, he will refer you to them. Are we together? Let me give you one more key. I sense that there is a wind that is about to enter this place. There is, there is a wind. Because I prayed only for a short time for this meeting, truly. And when usually I just prayed that God would give me direction. And the scripture that came to my spirit was Isaiah 32, 15. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness be a fruitful field and a fruitful field be a forest there are levels from a wilderness you can be fruitful as an individual a forest starts because the tree that is there starts multiplying it is multiplication of one tree that produces a forest hallelujah are we learning now sit down let me just give you one more key the hand of god you see why it's good to come to church now haven't described for you the hand of god there are certain principles that you must understand because i told you that the hand of god explains the power of god in motion the power of god at work listen the power of God only blesses the saints when it is at work, not just when it is present. The power of God can be present and yet it will not bless you until the power of God is at work. For instance, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, listen please, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Are we Bible students? And then verse 2 says, now the earth, verse 2, was without form is the hebrew expression tohu wa bohu confusion and chaos watch this and the darkness was upon the face of the deep interestingly in the midst of that confusion the bible says the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters and nothing happened the presence of the spirit of god did not bring any effect 
until we get to verse 3 the bible says and god said there are triggers there are principles that must be understood if you want to see the power of god you want to see the hand of god just because you want the hand of god to rest upon your life does not mean it will rest i will introduce a few and then we'll pray because the lord placed it in my heart that tonight will be a prayer meeting and then by all means please do not miss tomorrow's service are we together if there's no space sit outside climb the fence sit on the ground people travel with all due respect from north to south and when there are no seats because they must get to their destination there's even if it's on the ground i will sit there i'm not saying you should sit literally i'm just saying your desperation must be that high that i'm determined to leave this place by the hand of god hallelujah and then the bible says watch this the bible tells us very interestingly that there are people who desire deliverance desire the hand of god and never saw the hand of god never saw the manifestation of his power an example of such that is very common in the bible watch this now for 430 years god's people kept crying crying and yet deliverance did not come for 38 years the man at a pool called bethesda close to where the power of god would work are we together now and yet did not receive anything so just because you desire to see the hand of god upon your life does not mean it will come just because you want to see the power of god moving if i don't tell you this many of you may have just been excited for nothing i must show you the trigger i must show you the key are you ready hmm. there are a few keys this is really where the secret is the awareness that the power of god can be outstretched and can do all the things we listed that is a fact but whether or not it will be captured in your life is a different thing altogether i want to show you a few secrets and i pray and hope that you believe are you ready number one the first key that causes the power of god to rest upon a man's life mightily the hand of god to come upon a man or the the hand of god to fight whatever it is watch this now is your determination to walk in the will of god as simple as this sounds you just write it down because the power of god has a singular assignment to bring all things to the will of god if you remove the will of god out of the program of a man's life the power of god has no assignment again believers please listen please listen everything the entire administration of the power of god in the bible was always with respect to the will of god that means the power of god or the hand of god as we call it in this conference does not just work based on human desires uh -uh. god does not just do what men want otherwise we'll make god to look like a wicked god because he will only fulfill the lusts of men's heart are we together now the bible says and this is the confidence that we have in him that when we ask anything watch this according to his will he heareth us most believers person earth, this is where most sincere people miss it in their desire to see the outstretched arm of god we take away the will of god factor did you know that the reason why jesus was approved of god the reason why jesus was called the logos of god it was not just because he was god incarnate it was that the entire journey of his life lo i come is that in your bible in the volume of the book not to do my will to do your will there are many people who think the power of god is simply a supernatural instrument to fulfill their lusts and their desires and this is the reason why many believers in church do not receive from god so they are aware of what his power can do they know that the hand of god can rest upon a life if god 
became a robot and say you just desire and i do what if your desire is that i die you see that what if your desire is that this program should not hold tomorrow what if your desire is that all churches be closed and destroyed no the power of god is regulated by his will the power of god the mighty hand of god the hand of god only moves in the direction of his will the hand of god does not move in the direction of the desires of men if it looks like god grants men the desires of their heart is because they have turned their desires to his will did you get what i said this is very important I, 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 will, I will just give you this one and then we'll close. It is important. Believers, please hear me. God has been building in the course of this conference. But you need to understand this. If you miss this principle, you will be surprised. It is the reason why great people do not secure the assistance of God in their life. Because they want God to come and help them continue what they are doing that is already outside his will. And the power of God only fights what is antichrist is the reason why there are certain battles the power of god cannot fight because it is god who is causing the the, the the battle like for instance resisting the proud when god is resisting the proud the anointing cannot work because the anointing was only supposed to fight what is against the will of god so before the power of god works there is a verification system in the spirit whether that mission is the will of god or not this the this description is also how god makes friends and enemies <laughs> you are not a friend of god just because you are a believer no when the bible says let god arise listen believers let me teach you and all his enemies not your enemies and you may have heard me teach do you know what it means to be god's enemy god's enemy i will tell you according to scripture is not the person that you hate no the person you hate may not be God's enemy. Whoever becomes a perpetual interruption to the manifestation of God's will is his enemy. You read your Bible and see how God turned against his own people. Because in the economy of God, all things revolve within his will. To the point that when Jesus became sin, the father turned his face against him. Are we together now? knowing that that was the son of the living god but the moment he stripped himself of that righteousness and became sin the father had to turn his face so not even jesus was spared he said eloi eloi lamak sabatani is that not in your bible father even me you did not spare me with this principle and he turned his face against him because the same way he turns at sin jesus was not a sinner but he became an embodiment of sin. Is someone listening to me now? So, if you understand this key of the will of God, you have found the, the, one of the major secrets for securing the power of God. The captain of the, um, uh, the Lord's host appears to Joshua, Pasonath, and Joshua tells him, are you for us? Watch this. Or against us? What was his answer? Neither. This is not how God works. God has an agenda. I'm here to find out who is on the Lord's side. The person who decides to be on the Lord's side. That means if a believer through ignorance or through rebellion becomes a perpetual interruption to the will of God. Whether you're a man of God, whether you're a businessman, very soon you will find the hand of God working against you. Because God's agenda is that all things must line up and become consistent with his will it is the reason why the basis for accurate work for the believer is that you walk within the confines of scripture because therein is a concise description of the revealed will of god are we together now yes so many believers say things like oh god why is it that you don't want to arise like the mighty man you are and visit me and do this i don't like my condition no but you see your desire 
your heart, your pursuit must be consistent with the will of God. Otherwise, the power of God will not rest upon you. Is someone learning? That is why, now I say this with all due respect, you will find many skilled people, many gifted people, many intelligent and eloquent people, and you yourself, you almost cry and say, God, is it that you don't want to lift them? God is only interested in that which can birth and sustain his will. God would rather find a yielded weak person than a rebellious strong person. Because as far as God is concerned, the manifestation of his will is his priority. So when you see people at the cutting edge, you see his hand lifting them. It's not because he decided to isolate this man of God or isolate this person. Go and find out their heart for God. And there are people who have trained themselves to only, their matching order is the awareness of the will of God. Lord, what do you want? This was the secret of the victory of, of, of great people in the old times. Should I pursue? What is your will? Not what do I want? Even Jesus said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass over. He said, ah! He just remembered, nevertheless, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Someone say, your will be done. Does that look like the prayer that Jesus taught us? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth thy will be done is one secret I found in my life that for as long as your heart is ever committed to being a revelation of the will of God then you will secure his power is the reason why many many even men of God do not see the power of God because even though they want signs and wonders to happen the motive is not to glorify Jesus. The motive is just to market self. And sometimes we become disappointed in a very painful way. Is someone learning now? The first key I want to show you that controls the manifestation of the supernatural power of God in the life of a man. You want to see the hand of God come upon your family aligned to his will. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, whose soul has not lifted up, uh, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness even from the God of his salvation. The will of God. Why do you want the rising? Why do you want the prosperity? Why do you want the honor? Why do you want the expansion? I know you turned left north south east west i agree but why to what end and there are many options one can be the marketing and the promotion of self one can be to prove a point to people but the other can be that you desire his will and you see ultimately the will of god is not hidden the bible lets us know watch this now that god desires for the entire creation to come to the saving knowledge of jesus that they might know him and then to come into the knowledge of the truth when the revelation of jesus becomes your ultimate desire listen please please listen when the revelation of jesus becomes your ultimate desire you have found the key to the hand of god all the men god assisted and helped to rise were people who at one point including hedonistic kings the moment they could align themselves to birth his will they secured his attention are we learning say the will of god the bible prays that we stand entire and perfect in all the will of god all the will of god most times preachers do not find out the will of god business people do not find out the will of god they are aware of what they want they are aware of what will take shame out of their life but they are usually uninterested and the will of god ultimately can i tell you no matter what you receive from the spirit or from the word as the will of god the ultimate litmus test is is christ revealed through that process if jesus christ is not revealed through that process you are in error i don't care what it is making money having a name moving you from uh, uh what do you call it now from ceo to whatever transcontinental director 
it is not god is able to do that so if you tell me i found the will of god i will tell you i'm watching if i do not see the revelation of christ through your honor through your glory through your rising you now have a new branch okay all i'm watching is not your expertise i want to see jesus evolve and be revealed out of that process do you believe what i'm teaching you church is quiet now ba allow that circumcision happen in your hearts this night in the name of jesus because you will walk in power you will see the hand of god evidently it is in your bible that is not like his hand is too short that it cannot save but it says your iniquity you know what iniquity is a perpetual state of rebellion against the will of god iniquity is not sin no the psalmist said if i cherish iniquity in my heart the lord would not hear me iniquity is a perpetual willful continual interruption of god's will in and through your life and there are consequences one of it is that your bishopric is taken your candlestick your relevance your lampstand can be taken even if god started using you yesterday it's not it doesn't mean that he will use you now is someone learning this is very powerful the will of god can i give you one more i have about 20 minutes you will hear one more and then we'll continue the rest everybody say the will of god can you lay your hands on your head in one minute and say father to do your will let it be my obsession please pray some of you while you pray this prayer it will be your deliverance to do your will what is your will to reveal jesus go ahead and pray change my motif walk upon my heart to do your will to reveal jesus to reveal jesus to reveal jesus that men will see him go ahead to reveal jesus in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus so you want to see the hand of god upon your life the first requirement is the will of god can i give you number two the second key that causes the hand of god the power of god to be on display in the life of men is obedience obedience you will never see the hand of god upon your life not the life of anyone if you do not walk in obedience what does it mean to obey god to obey god means to act in keeping with his word to act in keeping with his instructions to act in keeping not to wish not just to talk to act obedience is an action word in one word faith is obedience no matter how you define faith if it does not culminate to obedience is a poor definition obedience number one the determination to walk in the will of god number two obedience let me give you number three the third key that controls the manifestation of the hand of god I will just introduce this and then we'll pray i really sense a steering in this place the third key is worship worship is a mysterious key tomorrow i'm going to be showing you are we together now how the hand of the lord he said bring me a mistrail and as they brought the mistrail he began to worship and the hand of the lord rested upon him the prophet and he said you shall not see wind you shall not see rain yet the valley the one of the richest description of the power of god is in the book of psalms there is no other book in the bible that captures the diverse operations of the power of god it was hidden in the life of a worshiper the deeper your worship the greater the stronger his hand 
David understood this. Hmm, David understood this. You read the book of Psalms. I repeat, there is no other manifestation, not even the Gospels, that captures the diversity, the display of the power of God as captured in Scripture. Now, worship. Worship is beyond singing. But singing is a major aspect of worship. Most people think you have to be a musician to sing. No. No. Any man of God that you see that God has trusted with great grace for supernatural, whether he's given the gift of singing well or not, these are people who have respected the ministry of worship. Hallelujah. Most believers do not understand that when you worship God in the beauty of holiness, when you praise Him, when you roll before Him, when you cry, it is not God you are helping. Something is actually happening to you. God does not change. God does not increase. Are we together now? When it looks like God is higher or He's become higher, it's simply your perception that changed. God does not change. God does not improve. God does not increase. Those attributes don't exist with him. He is. And that's it. Like the sun. It's been like that from when you were born. Still like that. Doesn't fade. Not intimidated. No amount of water or weather condition has been able to stop it. Are we together? Do you believe what I'm teaching you? I've given you three keys. I'm just trying to summarize because I want us to pray. That number one, if you stand in the will of God and you learn the will of God, you have found the key to the hand of God. Number two, your obedience. In disobedience, you will never see the hand of God. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. Whatever he tells you to do, John chapter 2, verse 5, whatever he tells you to do, Mary counseled them. He said, do it. Do it. How does Jesus see a man, ladies and gentlemen, watch this, a man who was born blind and then Jesus puts mud in his eyes and say, go. He didn't say escort him. Go, carry your blindness to the pool called Siloam and go and wash and you will see. He sees a man who had been crippled from birth and says, stand up, take your mat and go home. Obedience. Same thing happened in the book of Acts chapter 3. At the hour of prayer, Peter and John went to pray and they saw a man at gate beautiful and they told him silver and gold I do not have but such as I have give I unto you in the name of Jesus rise up and walk the man was staring at them nothing happened the power of God was present but bankrupt of obedience it could not work you couldn't call that the hand of God Peter had to assist him the Bible says he reached out to him and held him and the man leaping stood hallelujah i'm tempted to give you one more is that a good temptation i hope you will believe it <laughs> sacrifice that's why i said i hope you you are the one who tempted me the bible said there's no temptation that is bigger than us so for for it to have come and you, we, we, we cooperated in, in making it happen together. Sacrifice. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Gather unto me my saints, the Bible says, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hopefully tomorrow if we have the time, we're going to, we're going to examine as a case study the man Elijah. <laughs> Are we together now? Yes. Most, this is where my god this is where many believers have been cheated almost eternally they want to see the hand of god but they do not understand that in this kingdom the rising of the saints and the command of authority is highly dependent on sacrifice not only but highly it is in this area that whether you serve Jesus or Satan, it doesn't matter. You must go through that process of sacrifice. You want to be a, trad a priest, you want to be able to kill people, to disappear, it's still sacrifice. You can't dodge that one. You now say, I'm born again. Welcome to a new family, but you will still go through that process of sacrifice. 
most believers your own becoming is your obsession for convenience the psalmist said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord ladies and gentlemen there is nobody i know who is a carrier of the hand of god upon their lives who has seen god move over their lives who has seen the power of god that does not understand sacrifice and when i talk of sacrifice the issue of sacrifice in terms of laying down something is a latter aspect the real sacrifice is you if you are not on that altar together with your gift if it is only your gift that is on that altar it is not a sacrifice your gift will be on one side then you yourself must be on the other side are we together now the bible says in romans chapter 1 he says i be romans chapter 12 verse 1 i beseech thee brethren that ye offer your by the message of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service you know what that means that you are the one your entire life if the only thing you give god is your money it is too small no god is too big to for you to come if the only thing you give god is transfer or an alert that is too small no even to men there are people who have grown beyond the point where it's an insult if you give them money you will go and look for one old portrait that there are only two of them in the world then buy it and give them because there is nothing material that really matters please listen if you do not understand this you will never truly carry power and you will not see the hand of god upon your life gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me there are people who if the devil there comes near even if god's people are sleeping or awake their sacrifice has become a memorial in the spirit god has vowed a vow over their life that for as long as this man is there listen there is a level of sacrifice you get to with god where you become a friend of god you know what that means most people say i am a friend of god they are right but from a standpoint of spiritual intelligence not everybody can be a friend of god the friend of god is a status it's an honor it's like a badge god gives men do you know the implication of being a friend of god for you to be a friend of god if you are going to derail god would rather take your life than for you to end with a bad testimony most people don't know what it means to be a friend of god you have earned a status with god in the spirit jesus was speaking with his disciples and he says i no longer call you strangers but friends is that true yes and one of the privileges of being a friend of god is that he never does anything in your generation without revealing it to you this is what happened to abraham we're bible students shall i hide this from my friend abraham that when god wants to move upon the face of the earth god wants to move upon lagos he comes to you and says this is what i'm about to do that friend that stick it closer than a brother but it answers to sacrifice ladies and gentlemen most believers there are realms in the spirit where it is not just about loving jesus wonderful as it is your life must become a living sacrifice if you want to see this happen it's an uncomfortable truth but i tell you it's the truth behind the exploits of men and the mysterious hand of god upon great people in ministry in business there are people who god has suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm i tell you it's not because their prayer life is the longest it's not because their word study life is the most concise there is something they have done with god they have provoked a sworn blessing that in blessing i will bless you hallelujah there are there are people today pastor Nat, who is not necessarily the extent of their spirituality that brought them into ministry there is something their parents did they dedicated certain rooms and said we may not be anointed but every missionary who comes let him get a place to stay they did this for 20 years 30 years and god vowed a vow that he would never allow anybody rise in this family without any help hallelujah i wish i had the time i would tell you my stories 
it is not just prayer and fasting i have emptied my accounts only god knows how many times for god and because i love god i have stretched myself border to border because i love god and it is not i'm i'm, I'm even uncomfortable as i'm saying it now because i'm not just trying to market myself or whatever i'm showing you that there are certain dimensions in the spirit where the key is blood there are certain dimensions where the key is not a metallic object it's on this it, blood must be dripping on your altar for certain doors to open i wish i were lying i would just tell you i'm joking unfortunately i'm not there are levels of power and authority that you want to carry over nations some of you here perhaps you are worshipers and you want the hand of god to rest upon you that the nations will hear you you can write a thousand songs ladies and gentlemen you will sing the songs of the great and it will not carry that effect because it's not coming from that depth in the spirit today i hear people say i want to carry the mantle of reinhard bonke i want to carry the mantle of don't just covet the performance of the hand of god upon their life find out the kinds of sacrifices this man made i hope you still like what i'm saying we're going to pray it is the truth it is the truth it is the truth sacrifice is where men are separated from boys sacrifice in the spirit that men and women who love god first with all their hearts and you have gotten to a point where there is nothing you cannot give god at that point you can be lying down and one song without you writing it will come through the gate of your sacrifice and that one song can open you up to the nations one sermon by the spirit can come how was creation saved sacrifice not desire to the point that when god wanted to sponsor redemption jesus himself had to come and die as a sacrifice is a principle that even god respected jesus cried and god saw him crying yet he did not withdraw that uh, that justice system had to be meted out do you know one of the scariest statement in the bible is that jesus gave up the ghost I understand the fact that men how does life die how does life die how does light become darkness the father did not spare Jesus let me tell you the price of redemption death did Jesus pray when he walked upon the earth yes but his prayer could not translate people from darkness to light no did Jesus fast more than you most likely did jesus study scripture from age 12 when some of us were not born again with all of that so if it is being warded jesus was warded if he's been prayerful jesus was prayerful if he was fasting jesus fasted are we together if he was obedience jesus was the perfect portrait of obedience and with all of that he could not birth redemption he went to the point where they lacerated him 30 stripes said 40 stripes save one and the father still looked at him put a crown of thorn upon his head he had the option he said i can call a legion ten thousand angels and pontius pilate looked at him what a man is this and jesus a 33 and a half year old man carried the cross by himself naked with the shame his only cloth was his blood and he went to the cross and the father was still watching two thieves were there talking all their stories he was still there until jesus died went to hate is the place of the dead purchased for us redemption and resurrected triumphantly are we together yes. you don't have to die for your own sins but sacrifice is a non-negotiable requirement lord i desire power i want to see your grace rest upon me lord i want to become like personat if his trumpet i even have it at home i can play the thing I, I can blow it why is it that i blow my own and nobody the people say don't disturb us i can tell you it's not that there is something wrong with your skill is that there is a measure there is a relationship between death and glory my bible says except a corn falls to the ground
man dies. I will stop here so that we'll pray. Rise up on your feet. Hmm. Are we together? Remember everything I've told you. I gave you four keys tonight. We'll build on them tomorrow. The will of God. If you cannot find the will of God and if your life is not pegged at birthing the will of God, you may not see the hand of God in your life. What's number two? Obedience. To the disobedient, you will always empower the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that walketh in the sons of obedience, having the readiness to judge all disobedience only when your obedience is complete. There is nothing God will ever do in your life that will not demand obedience from you. Salvation is the cheapest thing given to men, and even that, you must obey the principles connected to it. That if you shall confess with your heart, the, your mouth the Lord Jesus believing in your heart you use any other formula it does not equal salvation hallelujah what's number three worship an intense atmosphere for someone you need to re return home and create an atmosphere of worship and cry before the Lord and watch the wonder working power of praise with understanding the wonder working power of worship with understanding and then finally sacrifice sacrifice of your life your resources your everything for his glory perhaps for someone you came here and god is challenging you and say my son if you desire to step into a higher level it must be on the wings of sacrifice i know that because things like sacrifice have been abused sometimes preachers get afraid of talking about it but the truth is still the truth it is a non-negotiable condition there are times where God has instructed me. I have carried certain seeds to our fathers of faith. They spoke certain things in my life in the secret. The answer was revealed in the open. Sacrifice. There are things that I did with God. There was a time, Pastor Nat, I emptied, when we were starting, I emptied the ministry account at God's instruction. If it's my own account, I, I don't know how many times. I even wonder why it was not closed then sacrifice it's not about money if you can prove to god you are higher than everything you gave me then he will keep lifting you are we together there are some of you the reason why you cannot see the hand of god on your life is that there is something else on your head so his hand cannot rest there when his hand comes it finds out that something else has replaced his hand on your head when he comes he finds money on your head there are others when he comes he finds fame on your head there are others when he comes he finds lust on your head and he says no no you must get rid of these things then my hand can come upon you is someone ready to pray father the grace to do your will the grace to obey the grace to plunge myself in worship and the grace for sacrifice Re re uh, release that grace upon me please pray pray we're taking a minute or two and we're done spirit of the sovereign lord Come and make your presence known with you, the glory of the risen Lord. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known with you, the glory of the risen Lord. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the way of your glory. Let the way of your glory. You are praying. Just a minute and we're done. 
Your name is to be hallowed. Ah. Your name is to be hallowed through my life. for stretching your time but I just want to make one call and then we're done tonight I'm not going to ask you to come out but I sense in my heart the Lord is saying I am looking for someone here who is prepared to be a sacrifice I want to use you as, as a spectacular display of my glory but there are still things you are withholding there are still things you are withholding and the Lord wants you to cry in the next one minute. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but hear me, I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. There are many of you, there are relationships you love more than God. There are business deals you love more than God. No. This realm of sacrifice, there are few people who have gotten there. There are pastors, maybe listening to me. The secret is not just your prayer. The secret is not just your fasting. You have prayed, Jesus prayed. You have fasted, Jesus fasted. You studied the word. But when your all becomes poured like a drink offering, you have approached a, a realm in the spirit where you will see the hand of God. I want to give you the next one minute. I apologize for stretching the time. Whether you want to lie down, whether you want to cry, you're going to say, Lord, this is me all of me i surrender everything everything i surrender all to you everything i give to you meet it with god i'm withholding nothing I surrender all to you. Everything I give. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It is the hand of God you desire. Listen to what you are saying. I'm withholding nothing. Sing it. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. With all the nothing, with all the nothing, with all the nothing, with all the nothing, will you give yourself away? That's a question that God is asking you tonight. Will you give yourself away so he can you? You answer now. I give myself away. I give myself away. So he can use me. I give myself away. So he can use me. still pray. Just take a minute. You are not wasting your time. Father, every idol. And everything that has stopped your hand from resting resting upon my life resting upon my finances ah your, your arms are not too short that you cannot bring deliverance you have seen it from scripture that the hand of God can create the hand of God can sustain the hand of God 
can judge the wicked. The hand of God can bring deliverance. It can bring redemption. The hand of God can lift men. And he was surely get rid of Hear me, man of God. The secret to being in ministry is to forget about ministry and focus on Him, loving Him, giving your all, pouring your all. Then you will find ministry. Businessman, some can trust in horses and chariots, but when God's hand decides to bring you a thing, it preserves, it keeps. For someone here, you have tried and tried and tried. God brought you to the Oasis Conference because he's saying, stop. This, this up and down does not give God glory. Waking up in the morning and sleeping late in the night, hustling through life, only to eat the bread of sorrow. Help those under the anointing. Please help that lady so she doesn't enjoy herself. When the glory comes, There'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. Sing it one more time, then I make a call. When the glory is calling you you've trusted in things of lesser value but he's showing you the path to the hand of God the hand of God is not just the name of a conference it's an experience that you can have and carry it can become your habitation your reality but only if your heart is stayed on revealing Jesus seeing that his will is birthed perpetually through your life that you walk in obedience that you live a life of worship huh. Paul and Silas they prayed but when they sang the Bible tells us that his mighty power came descended upon that prison room and all doors opened hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord tomorrow we'll have the time to minister to people i know that there are people who have come with several needs come tomorrow with your heart opened i will share with you a few more secrets and then god will grant us grace and will experience his mighty hand but watch this i'm standing taking one or two more minutes for the sake of someone who came to church right now perhaps you were invited perhaps you are following online Perhaps you attended all the sessions before my time here. And in the midst of this discussion tonight, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to you. For you, it is not even surrender of things. It is surrender of your entire life. Whoever told you you are at a loss when you give everything to Jesus? Whoever told you you are at a loss when you hand over your life? You have mismanaged it, you keeping it yourself. Why don't you trust one who has the track record? Pastor Nat taught us that he has a track record of keeping his word. He will not break it because of you. I want to give someone an opportunity. Two calls in one. Number one, you are saying, Apostle, I've heard many preachers make altar calls. But this has come very different tonight. And I truly want to make Jesus Lord of my life. Indeed. Persons number two. You are saying apostle 
mine is that I am determined to surrender all. I remember making the altar call, but I cannot say in truth that my life, I cannot call myself a child of God. I don't want you to be ashamed. There is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Wherever you are in this place, I'm going to count one to five. From the father's place in this auditorium to all of the aisles, I want you to summon that courage. I'm looking for one sincere person. Come and stand before me here. I want to pray for you. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Come and stand. I begin my call now. One. You are good. You are kind. You are more than these. Help me. Lost for words. Keep coming. Elohim, Let's celebrate them as a come. I like this part. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it. ladies and gentlemen hear me some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears this is what it takes to have the hand of god rest upon an individual i salute you for the courage defying all odds and coming before jesus and i'm standing on the stage here with pastor nat i want to lead you to make this prayer whether as a first time prayer or you are genuinely sincerely rededicating your heart to jesus lift your right hand may i request whether you're kneeling or standing i want to see your hands lifted and then i pray with you say this as loud as you can mean it from the depth of your heart say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word if you're joining them please come i see some more people say tonight i have heard your word i need you in my life Tonight, I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin... I see some people coming from the overflow, I, I, I presume. Please come and join them very quickly. Thank you. Thank you for the courage. God bless you. Let's give them a big God bless you. Come. There's always room at the cross. Say it again. I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, my King. Let your hand rest upon me for redemption, for salvation, for deliverance. I declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb amen help them i want to pray for you now please just help those under the anointing i stretch my hands over all of you who are in front here and in the name of jesus the one whose hand we have prayed that it rests upon us i'm praying for you that everything that is not of god around your life destroying your destiny keeping you in sin i pray for you by the authority of scripture and upon your confession be set free now be set free now in the name of jesus i call you 
bona fide recipients of the life of God and I decree and I declare over you that the power to live a victorious Christian life is released upon you you go and excel from tonight the hand of God rests upon you in the name of Jesus amen and amen all right so please remain please remain pastor Nath has a word for you just just a moment just a moment just remain usually you would be going but yes um i don't know what apostle is about to do next but while i was sitting there the spirit of god just quickened my heart and um people who have stepped out to go i really just wonder where they are going to you know you are you are there's such an awesome presence here this conference is not every day and what we're about to do is very pivotal to your lives now pastor peter come up um i just wanted them to stay here and be a part of it now when we talk about the hand of god one of the ways i believe it manifests is in the prophetic say the prophetic yesterday i told you how i got an impression to wear white no, please please wait 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 so we've prayed for this conference so we so whatever you are seeing when men of god come here there is a spirit of prophecy already so it was impressed upon my heart i wore a white shoe i was at the door and i felt a, a strong impression to wear the black as i came in here i realized i mean i, I well, it's not every time you, you read meanings into those things, but whenever the Holy Spirit quickens you, then you take it seriously. And Dr. Sarkoe said, oh, you are dressed like me. And then Pastor Peter said, oh, we are dressed. And then I got that quickening again. And I was praying here in the Spirit, and the Spirit of God impressed upon us to, to speak life. Now, I'm sitting down there again today. Before coming, I got a, a witness by Uche's black shirt. You know, you sent me a white one. So I was about to wear the white one. The Spirit of God just brought you by vision to me. So I knew that I was supposed to dress like this. I didn't tell Apostle how to dress. And the speaker of today is dressed this way. And Pastor Peter, who wore white yesterday, is dressed this way. So this is not some arranged stuff. Now, I ask questions. So Lord, why why this again and then while apostle spoke from exodus 3 19 to 20 please put up the picture of yesterday that we had put up the picture for a witness you know that and i that image came back to me and while apostle quoted exodus 3 19 to 20 please put exodus 3 19 to 20 don't leave today until i say leave okay he says um, I am, and I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go no, no not by a mighty hand and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in the midst thereof and after that he will let you go I had a str strong impression to have us pray that prayer again and then the apostle will declare that whatever represents Egypt in your life that the Egyptians you've seen today, you will see them no more. We will stretch our hands and the man of God would speak it. So yesterday we spoke life. Today he's going to anything that represents Egypt in your life. We're going to serve them notice. Amen. So that's why I asked them to stand. So apostle, if, you, if you're done with what you're Amazing, doing. amazing by the spirit. And, and that is true what, what um, Pastor Nat is saying. Sometimes... It's called the ministry of signs and wonders. God does certain things so that people will know as a sign that he's in their midst. Are we together? And when you see him, you must discern what he's saying. And so in one minute, I know that our time is gone, but these are very prophetic moments. Whatever represents Egypt in your life, I want you to mention it before the Lord and say, Father, it must live now. Go ahead. Don't be silent. Whatever represents Egypt. For some of you, Egypt means bankruptcy of spiritual fire. 
for some Egypt means shame and reproach for some of you Egypt means bondages of all sorts please don't be silent I'd like you to pray we are agreeing by faith now we're going to be making declarations by the spirit Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Exodus 14 13. I want to speak over your life now. Exodus 14 13. There are two more keys I'm going to give you tomorrow, and then I'll show you something else. But the Bible says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, he says ye shall see them no more forever therefore in the name of jesus financial egyptians spiritual egyptians career egyptians egyptians that hinder fruitfulness by the power that raised christ from the dead we command that they live your life now we command that they disappear help that lady disappear from your life now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah in church on Sunday I preached from 1st Samuel chapter 4 and verse 21 the statement Ichabod I want to cancel that still in line with this over someone hallelujah the Bible says and she the she there is the wife of Phinehas. She named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel. I don't know who is it. The glory of your destiny has left. I decree and declare right now in this prophetic atmosphere, standing with the man of God, we release our faith. Right now, every mark upon your head called Ichabod. We wipe it right now. We wipe it right now. Evil marks upon your head. Demonic marks upon your destiny that has taken the glory from your life. Let it be wiped away now. 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 Instead of that name, Ichabod, by prophecy tonight we call you Beulah we call you Hepzibah we call you Beulah we call you Hepzibah we call you Beulah we call you Hepzibah no more shall this proverb be used in your life that the glory has departed in the name of Jesus and finally for some of you as a sign this night before the day is done, God will give you a strange testimony. My God will give you a strange visitation. You will see the hand of God practically. Some of you over your finances. Some of you over your health. Some of you supernatural emails. Supernatural calls. God will be writing off age long problems. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Before I take my leave, let me encourage you. Please listen. Tomorrow is going to be a very prophetic time in this place. And I'm repeating again that please you come. I'm lending my voice with Pastor Nat. And that also includes those who are connecting from across the globe. Distance is no barrier. This can be your chance. Some of you probably missed Hallelujah Challenge. You didn't have the opportunity to participate now here is an opportunity that god is giving it is no coincidence god is a god of mercy his hand is coming again there are whole families that need to connect tomorrow whole families not just individuals father mother siblings there are some of you who need to come with your loved ones pastor night may i request is it all right if i request that the people come with prayer requests tomorrow 
How many of you believe in answered prayers? Now, here's what I want you to do. I don't know how those online will participate. I'm, I'm sure there's a way. Those online, um, there should be a link or there should be a way to send your request. One of the things we're going to be doing tomorrow night is that everything you know that is inconsistent with the will of God, whether a health condition, whether a family problem, please don't spare. Write it down. Even for your loved ones who are abroad, you can call them and tell them fire is burning here. The hand of God is resting upon us. Write them down. We're going to collate them and we're going to lay hands on them. And the mighty hand of God. Tomorrow, let the God that answers by fire, may he be our God. Are we in agreement on that? For tonight, may the Lord bless you. You will experience his mighty hand. Like we said, some of you, before this time tomorrow, you will only return to give thanks. Because God would have so visited you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.